record. Welcome back to the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker on this October 24th, 24th 21st, 2020. Uh, Brendan and Greg and myself are here, and we have our very first live guest, and that is Belinda Carroll, who is a, a very well-known comedian here in Portland, Oregon. She's the founder of the Portland Queer Comedy Festival, and she has... Uh, lowered herself to our level to join in in our particular <laughs> broadcast today we're podcast not a broadcast um where our client and we have a new client today it's an unusual client it's irish halloween turnip so that um obviously is going to beg a lot of questions so i'll just start off and define what that means irish halloween turnip it used to be way back when turnips were used in ireland as the jack-o'-lanterns were carved and the candles were placed within the turnip um, to be the decorative thing for Halloween. And then when the Irish moved to the United States, they found that pumpkins worked better as uh, lanterns because they were much bigger. So that's the essential um, definition for the Irish Halloween turnip. Now, for those of you out there who may be like me, don't actually know where the word Halloween comes from, I was just curious if you guys have a clue as to where it comes from. All Hallows' Eve? Uh-huh. But what does that mean? Oh, it's some religious thing, like when all the ghosts and goblins come up. They yeah. talk about in the Bible, maybe? They talk about ghosts and goblins. <laughs> the, the goblins Bible. and the was mummies. It, was it like Luke chapter <laughs> goblin? <laughs> When all the monsters come out and play and have a mash, <laughs> they have a monster mash. Well, but you, go ahead, Brenna. I was going to say it has something to do with it has something to do with when the membrane between the, the dead world and the live world becomes thin. That's what I understand. Uh, Belinda, you had uh, something you wanted to add to that. Oh, is it like a pagan thing? I don't know. Well, it basically, first of all, we should define what the word hollow means. And I had to actually look that up today. I realized that I, all these years, didn't really know what it meant. So hollow is essentially a saintly or holy person. So whenever you have All Hallows' Eve, the next day was All Hallows' Day. So Hallows was a celebration of the saints and the dead. And so the evening is obviously the, the night before. But there's something called a triduum which is, it's essentially a three-day celebration way back when, where you had All Hallows' Eve, All Hallows' Day, and then All Souls' Day, which was the third one. So you celebrated the That's saints. That's what you with Aretha Franklin. <laughs> That's right. Where essentially <laughs> all of the Irish um, lantern turnip carriers were sounding yeah, like Aretha Franklin when they were calling out for their friends as Correct. they wandered through. Did but they there's a whole slutty back then? Did they dress yeah, all slutty and sexy? I knew that, that you were going to be getting no, 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 no. Word, right? She was very deep into her uh, work with the Staple Sisters, and so she was only doing gospel then, which is why it was All Souls Day. Oh, I didn't know this. You, you just can't <laughs> yeah, No one does. It's just it's a sad part of history. We never talk about it anymore. Yeah, it's not even drunk history anymore. It's just, what do you call it, <laughs> Greg? It's like drunk yet sober history or something well that's what people if do in history it, make the world six thousand years i can make aretha franklin immortal <laughs> so aretha <laughs> franklin has nothing to do with it you'll be the one behind aretha franklin's immortality <laughs> not her talent <laughs> no her no it's, it's just because belinda's like you know i picked this person i will make her immortal belinda yeah. will give her great pr <laughs> a good pr <laughs> spin was what you need. <laughs> well, apparently there's like a whole story behind the turnip thing happening too. So it, it, it's essentially like an Irish tradition. So there was this guy named Stingy Jack. And <laughs> Come on. You made not, that up. I'm, I did not <laughs> think Stingy Jack. Stingy <laughs> Jack. And apparently he played <laughs> jokes on the devil. He like tricked the devil into doing things for him. And I'm so really after he got these tricks done, because of that, God wouldn't let him into heaven, and the devil wouldn't let him into hell. So essentially, he had this turnip with a candle in it, where he had to travel around for the rest of the, I guess, 
uh, throughout purgatory forever um, carrying this lantern. And so he was called Jack of the Lantern, Stingy Jack. Um, became Jack of the Lantern, and that's where Jack uh, O'Lantern comes from, is from this guy, Stingy Jack, somewhere in, in Ireland. So it's like, I, I, I learned things today. And, uh, you know, one of which is that Aretha Franklin apparently she could possibly take over for Stingy Jack, but I think she needs to find ways to treat It'd be way more entertaining. Think about it. It would be. If you had Aretha Franklin wandering through the With a lantern and she'd be singing a thing and you'd be like, oh my God, I'm changed. Like, it'd be amazing. <laughs> She's definitely up in heaven, though. She made it into heaven, right? Aretha. What, uh, what song do you think that she would be singing as part of her, her purgatory? She would have to probably sing It's a Small World all the time. No, 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 no. no. Well, it's purgatory, so she'd be stuck doing something she didn't like to do. Ah. Yeah. I think you're not necessarily unhappy to be in purgatory. But you're also not necessarily sad to be in purgatory. Uh -huh. I think purgatory is the uh, is the soul a new neutral. Yeah. Uh, all I gotta say is a woman all the time and be like, "Man, I'm kind of over it," but I, I liked. I like the stingy Jack guy. I mean, I I, he, I think he's become my new hero. He said he said fuck you to both establishments, and then he has to wander around with a turnip. I, I'm down with that. Yeah, this is this is like the Johnny Appleseed of spiritual fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and radishes too, the Johnny radish seed. I think, radishes, you know? Yeah, well, I think radishes might be a little small, but apparently beets were also used for the purpose of lighting candles as using as a lantern. So I guess you have some pretty big beats. And also the origin of hip hop. Say that again? Also the origin of hip hop. Which is the origin of hip hop? <laughs> the beats. The beats. <laughs> the beats. <laughs> oh, we've got puns going today. Maybe they were gem genetically modified beats and radishes that were huge. Is really? Size. Was good, was good egg modification back then, did they? I think if they modified a radish to be a pumpkin, it would be a pumpkin. It would no longer be a radish. It's like, when is a radish not a radish? When it's a when jar? It's a when it's a pumpkin. It's a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently Riddle this. me this, oh Sphinx. My question is, is this, is this, is this gourd big enough to be a lantern? Or is this... Apparently. Big well, if it's, a, if it's bigger than a turnip... Yeah. And, and if it's smaller than a turnip and bigger than a radish... I think it could be a good lantern. I it's kind of, it's kind of squash, you know. It'd be hard to get some. Well, maybe you could, you'd, have to, you'd have to hole out the middle and then put your candles just right in the middle. Great, yeah. I mean, Brendan, did you say it's kind of squash. Yeah. It's kind of squash. Oh, oh, okay. With an ed at the end. But it's a kind of squash too. Throwing another pun into the mix today. <laughs> We've got no. The puns are abounding. It's a kind it's of a squash. Day, You're out of your gourd, Brendan. Pun. Oh, 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 oh. oh, pun unintended. <laughs> that was that was very deliberate. So apparently, the the reason that people start wearing costumes for Halloween is because when the All Souls part of it came into play, people didn't necessarily want to be recognized by the souls that were wandering the earth. So they would wear the costumes so that they couldn't be seen as be recognized by these spirits or wraiths or but why did they wear sexy costumes were they trying to turn on the ghosts or? i don't know greg <laughs> you know you seem to be fixated on this today why don't you uh, give us some examples of what you're talking about well on halloween everyone just is up sexy, sexy like sexy apparently nurse, the ghosts sexy and Hitler, goblins sexy goblins sexy sexy ghosts. trump everyone dresses up sexy for halloween that's <laughs> sexy didn't care maybe they did it. say that again I said somebody was sexy Jim Carrey the other day. Was he it that sounds hot? Do the mask. Do you know the mask? Right. Yeah. Yeah, they were the mask, but they were the sexy mask. So they had a sexy Ooh. outfit on. So Jim Yum. was it actually Jim Carrey who was wearing the mask? No, Could it was be. a girl. Okay. I mean I'm assuming she identified as a girl. Okay. Well, and also you have to realize that we are older men and we're stuck in perhaps the, our way of speaking about things so if you find us doing something that's derelict in terms of um how we refer to someone feel free to call us out on that too because we might change it's possible that um we would fix our 
way of speaking to match today's issues. Um, it just well, depends if we can get through our old habits or not. I'm not, oh, I'm not like if a ghost is having trouble identifying as a goblin, something <laughs> like that. I, I'm not really sure where you're going with this, Matt. She's a ghost. I'm just giving Belinda free will to attack us if she feels like we should be attacked. I think she knows that. I've heard her comedy. Okay. What have you heard, Greg, that makes you think that she knows that? I think he watched well, my slut walk set. Your what set? Um, my slut it set at slut walk in like 2018. Oh, is that what you yep, watched? Yeah, I think that's the one I watched. And I watched another <laughs> one. It was earlier. But it was, uh, it was quite rib ribald. Is that how you say that? Well, that's how you said it. Ribald? <laughs> I never knew how to say that word. Yes. No, I just imagine. You Would you like to use other words you don't know how to pronounce, Greg? Ribald, no. ribald. Tangential. Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> um, so, uh, Audrey, that... perhaps? Risque? Uh -huh. I'm just trying to give Greg other words he could use. Oh. So that's one he doesn't know how to pronounce. So, tawdry, risque, raunchy. R risky, tudry. Very tudry, correct. It's a T W O D R Y. Obscene. Obscene. That's that's Del general, generally the delightfully theory. so though. <laughs> Wonderfully obscene. Uh, so I went and did a show uh, after coronavirus for a dude in a backyard, and he called me, and he had only seen that set. I don't even know how he found me. Cause he just caught, cause I don't have, a, I didn't have a website. I don't have a website right now. Mm. And so um, that's my website with like my phone number on it. And, uh, and so anyway, so he called me out of nowhere and he's like, Hey, my name's Doug. And I want to hire you to do my wife's 50th birthday party. And this is after coronavirus. It's like in like May. Uh -huh. And so he's like, I want you to do this set. And, uh, so I have a backyard and you just come in the back and then you'll just do it on the patio to all of our friends and stuff. And they were, they, they were like, this is a party that we're having, but you won't actually come in contact with people. You just do the party, then you'll leave. And I was like, well, coronavirus, whatever. And then I was like, this is like what I get paid normally, like whatever. And they offered me a tidy room to do that. And I was like, okay. So I came and I literally put the microphone down, put the uh, PA down and then just went into my set. It was the weirdest fucking thing. So I look out in the audience and it's all children. Oh no. <laughs> no way. Yeah. You would like the like party the clown? And the daughter and the mom wanted to be a lesbian real bad when she was a kid and she thinks it's over. And so she was like sitting there and now mind you, they hired me based on my slut walk set. So they hired me based on the set on the internet. So I was like, well then that's what you're getting and you're doing it for an hour. And and so he was like, I want you to do that for an hour. My wife loves raunchy comedy and she's just super into it and whatever. And I was like, okay. And then I showed up and then it was just like, it was just like, like four adults in the front and then like 20 children. Like and toddlers like, or what was the age like group? Daughters and sons and like whatever. But it was like everywhere from um, probably like eight to like 20 like <laughs> well, children. Welcome kids. <laughs> I, was, I was like, fuck you. Like, you, you hired me. I spent time thinking about what I was going to say to you today based on this <laughs> conversation that your wife likes raunchy comedy. So you're the one that having to pay for therapy. Did you talk about uh, <laughs> masturbating to Rachel Maddow to the kids? Did you teach them? Yeah. I mean, I did the whole thing because that's what he wanted. It's like he, wa he wanted me to do an hour of my comedy. So, I mean, the, the Rachel Maddow thing is just the Tondra song anyway. So it's not really like. You can, like, if you were under a certain age and you didn't know what those words meant and you weren't able to, like, politically connect those words to actions, then you wouldn't know. Because I've done that song to kids before. I've done that song to, like, seven-year-olds, and they were like, you have a pretty voice, you know. <laughs> so no, I'm talking about the bid where you say that you want to masturbate to her. You masturbate to her in hotel rooms. No, I said I've never been in a hotel room. No, I say that. Oh, masturbating in a hotel room. Oh no, I just dropped that. I just to dropped MSNBC. That I just dropped that line, and then okay. it's fine. Yeah. Wait, no. The, the fact is that Greg does that too. He also masturbates them at sure. MSNBC, but specifically Joe Scarborough is. Uh, oh yeah, no. Good morning, Joe. That's what he's called. I'm that. masturbating to you right now, Matt. <laughs> I'm masturbating to anyone on TV oh, on a screen. 
got kicked off of the uh, CNN. The news. Yeah, the guy was like the chief legal <laughs> analyst for CNN. He was on a Zoom call. He was also yeah. he was the New Yorker. Yeah, um, he was New Yorker. And uh, apparently, he was doing things on camera he should not have been doing. It's like how quickly one's career disappears. It's like that's well, just I mean, I stupidity. Can. I can't tell you the tens of dollars I would miss out on if I was not doing I'd be <laughs> the tens of dollars. I'd be gladly in not a studio apartment. I'd probably be in a house with like a wife. You'd be a hundred hundred air. But you know, you you, <laughs> yeah. you probably do fine with a studio and apartment. You're like really close to where voice boxes and Greg goes there all the time now. Is it still open? Yeah. Oh, really? I did not know that. Yeah. How much is in an hour? Um, Thursday nights is happy hour, $12 a whole night. Ooh, really? But, you, but yeah. you're in your own room? Yeah. Yeah, and you go and you wear a hazmat suit, and, uh, you know, you the air comes in through the ceiling. I, 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 I'm lost. What Voice box? What is that exactly? <laughs> That's a <laughs> larynx. It's, it's what sits in your throat, and basically they visit Matt, your throat Matt, every Matt. Day. Matt, yes, shut yes. up. Okay. Shut Mute up and him. let somebody answer the question, please. Mute it. It's, it's a private room karaoke place in uh, yeah. Portland. There's two locations. You can go there like Japanese style, private room. Why would yeah. you want why would you want a private room karaoke? It's really it's fun. Really better when you sing. So if you're if you're somebody that does shows like me, then I can practice songs and then uh, and then do those oh. songs in a, okay. in a, in a tape And your box. friends don't throw tomatoes at you. And if you have people that you know don't have COVID, you could go to a private room as opposed to being in like in a bar, a bar where there's a ton of people that you don't know who they yeah. are, who are potentially spreading. And you do your pod and you do your whole like your quarantine pod. Yes. The people we like enough to hang out with. Which is what we have. We have a pod of people right now, and none of us are touching each other, so we're safe right now, unless somehow we found a way to transmit COVID through the electrical currents that is zoom or brendan's fingertips he, he was reaching out <laughs> touching us well thank you brendan you're welcome <laughs> so does anybody know what costume they're going to be wearing for halloween this year are you wearing a costume at all are you even participating in any halloween activities in any way a maleficent costume at goodwill for four dollars and 99 cents uh-huh and i will be doing my hair like maleficent and being a Disney evil princess or evil queen. I mean, I'm 45. I guess it's queen now, but <laughs> sure. you could be the queen mother if you want to be. Queen mother. Yeah. That's insulting. What? Why, oh, is shit. Ins Why is it insulting, Greg? That implies a geriatric age woman. It doesn't imply that at all. Queen mother? It just implies a mother of a queen. That's all it implies. It doesn't pretty mean old. Some of them start out at like eight, Greg. Oh. So anyway, um, I, have a, I have a client that has a, uh, a Halloween costume party. I'm thinking because I bought this black wig because I was uh, Severus Snape for my daughter's birthday party. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking about doing that, but instead getting like the skinny black tie and the jacket and doing uh, uh, Victor Vega from Pulp Fiction and just walking into because I don't work at the location and just walking in with the suitcase and my friend who's African American dressed and he kind of looks like Samuel L. Jackson and just kind of going in there like that. That's nice. kind of my plan. So you get Are you going to have something glowing in the suit briefcase? Are you going to set up I, a little light in there? I think so. I, I think oh, we're going to cool. figure that out. I mean like out of Repo Man where they have the, uh, the, the trunk of the car glowing yeah, Killed right, people. right. But remember in Pulp Fiction when they when Vince Vega opened it, it was glowing. He's like, "We got what we need." He's like, "Oh yeah." So that's right. Did they ever answer what was in there? I can't even no. remember anymore. No. no. I it's was thinking if you have a quandary. black wig like Severus, Severus Snape from Harry Potter, you could probably go as Joey Ramone too. Oh, <laughs> I don't. I, I, With a leather I, jacket. Yeah. Yeah. You combine the two. Actually, you could be both. Vincent Vega from uh, Pulp Fiction and Joey Ramone at the same time. I Vincent think, Ramone. Yeah, I think that, that judging my audience, I think they will connect with Vince Vega. They're not going to know Joey Ramone. Oh, that's very possibly true. You know, that I think it was in two different um, Tarantino movies. They had two characters of the last name Vega. 
I think in Reservoir Dogs, the Michael Madsen guy was last name Vega. So supposedly he's like the brother or the cousin to the Travolta character in Pulp Fiction. So I'm always was wondering if there was going to be like a separate movie that would possibly combine the two. Tarantino does leave little um, droppings, if you will, implying there's a, <laughs> there's a Tarantino <laughs> verse. There's like Tarantino. an MCU. It's like Tarantino's it's, scat. He, yeah, he has little thick clues. Track in all his him movies. in the wilderness. <laughs> that they're all kind of related. It doesn't really matter, but it's like a fun little thing he likes to do where it's all in the same universe, like the MCU or something. You go through the forest yeah. and you see a Tarantino dropping. You're like, I know there's a wild Tarantino here somewhere. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Fresh droppings from Tarantino. He, he only leaves scat on Uma Thurman's feet. Let's be straight about that. <laughs> on her feet? Yeah. All right, I want to understand the theory behind that one. He's a foot fetishist, Quentin Tarantino. You didn't know. Yeah, you didn't know he had a foot fetish? No, I, mean, I didn't watch... know. I just oh. thought he was just I don't know wacko. about scat, though. I don't think he has a scat fetish from what I'm I don't. Well, I wasn't saying that he had a fetish for it. I think it's just like it's how you could track him in the woods. You know, <laughs> you can find your your very own Tarantino. If you, you want to hunt a Tarantino. Recognize the droppings and he could go through. No, it, he does seem like a kind of dude that you need to recognize the droppings in order to hunt him down. <laughs> like, nobody just... Nobody has his address, just like you know how to find him if you know how to, like, recognize his shit. Right, which probably is shaped like uh, little weapons, I would think. You know, that's, that's what well, his, his drop is. But if you appropriated, so there'd be all samurai swords. <laughs> hey, can I share guys' advice? Um, so I have an uh -oh. online karaoke party I'm going to Saturday. And yeah, this is Dear Abby, no, so what advice do you need? The person right? insists that we dress up. I never dress up for Halloween. I'm terrible at that. Well, right now and you're doing I, the hooded assassin from Assassin's Creed again. Yeah, so that could work. I could be nah. just, but that's a pretty boring one. But if you just have common household items and no costumes, can you think of any Halloween outfits on the cheap? Well, I did one back in college, which was a, a wire hanger that I put on my head, and I went as abortion man. So that was a very easy costume <laughs> oh, that I made. Yeah. And then another yeah, year. Yeah, I don't think this crowd's gonna like that. Well, it's you know, it's it's simple though. It's it's very cost it effective. Is. They, that's a good right. one. I'll, I'll think of that. Another one I, I did one, one year because I wasn't into costumes back in college. So another one I had, I put all of my um, inner clothing on the outward part of me. So I like wore socks on my hands and my underwear over my pants. Revolutionary. Right. Well, I, I, I went a little bit further. So then I had these fake plastic ears and a flake plastic nose, which I also put on. And um, I had these things. I can't remember what they were called, but they were these balls that had faces on them. So I put one of those in the front of my underwear, too. And so in inside the underwear so that, you know, you could see the facial outline through the underwear. And people and I had to figure out what was this costume that I was wearing, and so people asked me. And I finally figured it out like I was the new line of underwear for Mr. Potato Head. That, but that was just using stuff around. Now. So I think that you could be creative enough, Greg. You could use I'm not. something around your house. You know, you could put on a pair of sunglasses and you could be the Unabomber right now. If you put those glasses down on your face, I think you're. Does anybody remember the Unabomber though? That's ancient oh. history. Well, you know. Who are you Is hanging out with these contest? days? What was that? Mm -hmm. Is it a karaoke contest? No, it's just fun. Well, that's how the Unabomber mm -hmm. was made. He was in a contest saying, well, who could you blow up? And he went, I could take care of that. And he wrote an entire manifesto, which I think is supposed to be you know, sung. And I'm going to kill. <laughs> um. Was that the Reader's Digest magazine, that contest? I think I remember that. <laughs> the Unabomber uh, Reader's Digest contest? I don't know. Is is that the one where you draw the turtle and you get into art school? That one? <laughs> yeah. You draw an exploding building and then make it happen. <laughs> it's like, if you can recreate this in real life, we'll let you into our school. It shows follow through. Yes, it does. It was, shows commitment. I was thinking about being a mummy and just wrapping toilet paper all around myself because they don't want to be from the waist up. But toilet paper is so precious now. That's not that especially precious. with the coming civil war next month. <laughs> So I want to hoard my, I don't want to waste my toilet paper on being a mummy. That uh -huh. seems frivolous. Well, why, then, why, 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 why don't have you the just, idea? why don't you just do the sheet with the holes in it and be a ghost? There you I go. Mean, that's, that's easy enough. But then I, I mean, it's not a good sheet. Well, get a not, bad sheet. Get a bad sheet. Yeah. I, I, don't, I only have a few sheets and I need them all. <laughs> 
I'm a so, pauper. Remember? Such problems for you. Please, Governor. Can I have another? <laughs> what seat? should I wear? Why don't you? Okay, okay, okay. Bag on your head, holes in it. You're the unknown comic. Yes, I forgot about him. Thank you. There we go. I'll have to get a paper bag though. How much? You'll have to come up with a lot of one-liners as well if you're going to pull off the the unknown comic. Oh, I got a million of them. Well, karaoke all he has to do is Dennis Leary's asshole, and then everybody will be like, he's a genius. <laughs> You know, and not even the song that Dennis Leary did either. Actually, Dennis Leary is a legitimate yeah. asshole. If you dress like that, I think you've got yourself a very safe costume. As a matter of fact, it's, I think, recommended for children's events as well. I'm about 100 pounds too big for Dennis a, Leary. You should put on a, uh, a, a dress shirt and a thin tie and leave your face exactly like it is and go out as a coked-out 80s stand-up comedian. <laughs> I do look like that, don't I? No, yeah, yeah. You can come <laughs> the, the typical, the, just scruffy, typical coked out eighty stand comedian. Yeah. If you have a fake, if you have a fake uh, uh, microphone, you could you could just hold a microphone. Boom, you're done. You got, yeah, maybe maybe get a device. bunch of like powdered sugar, powder under your nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Carry around your own little mirror and a rolled up dollar bill. So of course you need that dollar bill, though, don't you? I could use it again. <laughs> it's not like I wasted but it. How much it is? Oh, ninety percent of the world's coke. Uh, ninety percent of the world's money has coke on it. So I mean, that's not good. Um, you could use real coke and and liven up that Saturday too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely can't breaks. afford that. I can't even afford another <laughs> I mean, sheet. Well, I think she meant Coca Cola, Greg. I think you got it confused. Oh, Coca Cola. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. Get that. Yeah, she oh, was cool. that's, I'm, not, that's, I'm not getting anything out of this. <laughs> He's snorting his dollar <laughs> bills. <laughs> it's math. Well, maybe. You need to get more. You need to snort more of them, Brandon. More money? Okay. Yeah, you need to get the right. The, hey, I'd like to rant about something Halloween related is that the Halloween song list that people play, like, oh, it's Halloween time, so the radio station is going to play scary songs. And they are loosening the definition. Like they're playing like Man Eater by Hall and Oates. Yeah. They're playing Someone's Watching Me by Rockwell. That sounds yeah. just about a paranoid guy. There's nothing supernatural or spooky about it. It's just like, that sounds not scary. It's not the Monster Mash or Black Magic Woman. They're loosening the standards of what is allowed on Halloween radio. And I don't like it. Man Eater <laughs> by Hall and Oates. There's nothing scary about that song. He's talking about a woman who goes through a lot of men. But what if she's an actual cannibal, though? What if what if it was or actually shark. a literal but definition? Of it? Well, not, but you though. don't necessarily know that. Maybe she really was a cannibal. That's another. And he song. just Maybe made it a little song. lighter for normal consumption he's, on the he radio. He censored himself. Right. You know, he was like, you know, people can't really handle a song about a woman actually eating <laughs> about men. cannibalism. Right. And They're so I need to say, okay, well, she's just really into like going through guys, but. She in reality, so it could actually legitimately work. And then someone's watching be. me. Well, wasn't that like a song that was uh, written by Michael Jackson or something? That Rockwell song. Well, I know he sang on it. I don't know if he wrote it. Well, he see, have... there, there you go. So if Michael Jackson's actually on that record, that's another frightening aspect of that record, especially if he's talking about Michael Jackson yeah. is watching him, right? So you he can was kind of monstrous. You can tie that yeah. all in. You could, you could do that, Greg. I know. I just think it's Lucy. It's like you could say, whoa, ho, ho, it's magic. Because yes. magic is supernatural. Yeah. It's so, part of you Halloween. Just, you just have problems with things. That's all. I do. Fit your, you, your I'm like, a grumpy solid man. points of view. Are you in the station? Hmm? Where's the station? Are you in Tampa? No. No, Greg is in Portland. I don't listen to yeah. radio necessarily, but like at work, I have a a manager who's like, I made a Halloween set list and I hear um, these songs at the supermarket. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, Greg, Greg works at Burgerville, so he's got to deal with the music coming through the Burgerville speakers. No, no. Since COVID, everyone gets to play their own shit because nobody's in the restaurant anymore. We're just drive through, mm -hmm. so people can play whatever they want. The people. So have you been doing all punk music while you've been there, Greg? I don't ever have a choice because my phone's so, I don't know how to do it. I'm an old man who doesn't know how to hook it up to the speaker. So I have to listen to all these young kids' shitty music all day. You keep saying you're an old man, and I'm older than everybody here, and I could figure that stuff out. But you're young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> and physically, I'm like 80. 
<laughs> I've treated myself badly. Mentally, you're, you're 90. Is, yeah, I'm spry. <laughs> so that's, that's the first word people use. I'm like, man, you know, he's nearly 5,000 pounds. He's the spryest guy I've ever seen. You're supple as a fawn, Matt, to your age. <laughs> a fawn. <laughs> That's right. I go bouncing around, playing my pan flutes. <laughs> Sorry. Let me ask you guys, what's your favorite Halloween theme song? What's your favorite spooky monster mash? Um, no, I, I'm really not a fan of monster mash. One that's kind of become a favorite of mine over the last number of years is a song called Moon Over Bourbon Street from Sting. Ooh, I like that song. Yeah. Oh, so Interview with a Vampire. Was it in that movie? No, it's based on that. He actually, that's based on Anne Rice's character. Oh, I didn't know it had anything to do with yeah. vampires. Oh, I think it, I think it just had to do with else. somebody who was like kind of like a serial killer or something because he's like staring through people's windows. Like my, favorite, my favorite Halloween song is problematic because it's a thriller. Oh. I know. I know. I keep trying to change it. Just listen to the Vincent Price part of it and you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that part alone is seven minutes long, so. Yeah, so if you just listen to the Vincent Price part and then just cut it off of that stage, it, it combine that with maybe the beginning of the song Nights in White Satin from Moody Blues, you have a really good spoken word thing going on. Sure. You know? Brendan, what's your favorite? <coughs> uh, I think Werewolves in London. Oh, yeah, that's a perennial. Oh, that's a fun one. Uh, you that's know, if we're going to go with a Warren Zevon one, I would rather go with Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner for Halloween. Yes, that's over, a good Halloween over song. Over Werewolves of, of uh, London. Mainly mm -hmm. because it's more it's more Halloween-esque, in, in my opinion, because, you know, the guy doesn't have a head, which kind of evokes the whole Ichabod Crane Headless Horseman thing. Instead, he's a Headless Thompson Gunner going around shooting people in South Africa who did him wrong. But, I know, uh, but I like where it was a London because it goes, ah, ooh, and you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Greg does that nearly every um, episode. He has some howling that happens. Some uh, neurological incident where I have to howl. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Between, between Greg's howlings and, and uh, Matt's mini strokes, it's always, you know, <laughs> it's always a show. This is like a Jerry Lewis telephone here. <laughs> Our podcast. Yes, we're raising Colors kids. Are, raising money for the kids. Are standing by. We need we need money for these old men. <laughs> They're howling and seizuring. Well, I take advantage of the seizuring to get more typing in. <laughs> it's like it's all the same letter, but still, I, I get a lot written. <laughs> Just a lot. I thought of, you were doing it for sympathy. Page leads. <laughs> what was that, Belinda? I said, just the page is ease. Man, I'm still not page getting. Z. Yeah, if you're if you're writing about sleeping mat, it makes sense because it's just z z z z z z z. Oh, z's. Z's. A page z's. of z's. 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 It's basically okay, what I z. get when people listen to me talk. Yeah. More <laughs> 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 excitement. Matt's being freaking interesting again. So, um. I'm getting back to the, the concept. So apparently the, these three days, the period dealing with Halloween is called Hollow Mass. And I didn't realize it was called that because, you know, obviously there's Christmas, there's Hollow Mass, is, is the, or All Hollow Tide is another term for this period. And it's just a very fascinating uh, thing for me that I, like how things have, have changed so drastically from the original meaning of dealing with the saints to, as Greg has pointed out a number of times, people, men dressing like sluts. So <laughs> that's what you're talking about, right, Greg? Like and lots of women do too. Men in nurses' it's, outfits and. That's right. No, I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about women dressing like porn extras. Porn that's extras. That's what Halloween's become. <laughs> They're, they're the porn extras. They're not actually involved. <laughs> they're just they're the like, gaffers. They're the gaffers. Gaffers. They're like selling the cigarettes at the local convenience store. And the, the they're just standing boys. in the background going, oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of his They're the penis. one who dropped off the pizza delivery man, and then they went away. Yeah, that's a role. That's a paying role. <laughs> they're all the porn extras. <laughs> 
But you know what I mean. It's like so weird. Like, no, I wonder if in 50 no. years. I don't okay, know what you mean. Brendan, I, I think you do. I think in 50 years, children are going to grow up thinking Halloween is the day where you dress slutty and it's all about looking like a porn extra or why, porn actor. Why are you so stuck on this thing about people dressing slutty? People dress like Because when I was a kid. Costumes. Not when I was a kid. Well, well, the kids don't, do. don't dress like sluts. Adults well, do, but the kids don't. No, they don't. But I'm saying even adults back then would be like, I'm going to dress up like Frankenstein. Now it's just like, I'm going to dress up like sexy Frankenstein and have a <laughs> G-string I, with I bolts think... on my butt cheeks. Well, I feel like I feel like the 2020 is the year that changes. Yes. I mean, you yeah. know. Like, yeah, if your costume then... is only going to be from the neck up these days. I just and, think and... it's just like bad enough that you should just do whatever brings you joy. Because like, Dressing up like slutty Frankenstein makes you happy. Then I kind of want to see Greg's uh, take on the uh, the Frankenstein with yeah. the bolts on their ass. <laughs> I, I I really think Greg just needs to clear his browser history and probably his cache, yeah. and all of those ads will magically go away. Greg, <laughs> I don't think it's, it's women are are doing that, Greg. I think it's the algorithm showing you what you want to see. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm the, going to red tube right when we're done, and I'm looking up sexy Frankenstein foreign clips. And you actually know the name of a website, Greg. I'm actually kind of surprised. You don't know? You never heard of red tube? Well, no, I've heard oh, of God. a website before. I'm just surprised that you've heard of a website before, because yeah, well, I, you, don't, you don't own a computer and you don't yeah, know I, how. To, oh, that's the only thing you know. You just know. I have a cell phone. Forty that works at Burgerville. I think he knows what Red Tube is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, she tagged me. She has got my number. That's part of the test you take to get the job there. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's like one of the interview questions. <laughs> There's oh, like a multiple. Do you know Red Tube? Do you know you porn? If you don't know the answer, right. can you find the bizarre insertion category on Red Tube in within five minutes? <laughs> and yes, you get to work here. Because that's what we put in our sandwiches. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, if I was caught using red tube at work, I would be fired. And well, that promoted. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, how about those turnips? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those little lanterns, those tiny little lanterns little that would lanterns burn their fingers. Turnips. Well, I, I was thinking that a turnip is essentially like a very large, misshapen carrot, right? So... It's this this long, isn't that what a turnip turnip looks like generally? Or I it's guess a, they're various different shapes. More bulbous, right? I think. More I bulbous. Like they're, I feel like they're more like this shaped. Yeah. Okay. And then they got a little dingle. Yeah. 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 But there's like a dongle hanging off of it, right? Yeah, it's got a, a little dongle. It's got it's, it's got like a little uh, goatee, right? It's like but, a, but you'd a have rutabaga to with a goatee. You gotta but chop I, off the dongle. Oh. No, what I want to know is who was responsible for hollowing out the turnip lantern, because I feel like that is a horrible, horrible job for anyone. Like, think about it. Like, how hard is it to hollow out a pumpkin, which is softer than turnip, and then also you would have to make the turnip hollow enough that it would support both a candle and also oxygen for to feed the candle. I think in that period of time, since they had no other form of entertainment, that was probably the thing they did to bring the village together. It's like, oh this is turnip hollowing time. Time to make your Halloween lanterns here in uh, oh my God, County Cork, Ireland. What was that, Belinda? I would have been dead by 25. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think most were. They, they, were, they <laughs> died because of the turnip shavings that went up their noses. They had a... <laughs> I'm going to say that, that we are going to carve some turnips uh, at my house. Um, so I'll let you guys know what kind of hellish experience that is. But based so, on the right, show. Because you're Irish. So you're actually going to go for the turnip. You're going to go back to your roots, your ancestors. Old school. Yeah. Maybe I grab a jicama while you're at it see how that works out. What's that? Grab a jicama while you're at it and see no. how that works out. No. Okay. Anyway, Belinda, what were you saying? I said, I, I want you to do it and then report back on whether or not you would then make it a life choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, well here, here's and the thing about... The broader point that there is a person whose job was, if you're ever having a shitty day and you're like, dude, my life sucks, I want you to think to yourself, somebody used to carve turnips for lanterns for a living. 
at some point. That's right. At least <laughs> once a year. Once a year they did it. I'd rather flip burgers at Burger Bowl than that. That's true. And then carve turnips? Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably well, I mean, cut my fingers know, off. Whittling used to be a very popular pastime for people, and I could see them getting into carving turnips into whatever. There's there was this uh, photo of one of the turnip lanterns that's available like on Wikipedia, which is what first caught my attention on this and made me interested in making that the, the topic of discussion. Uh, but then I wondered, like, how did we get to pumpkins? And then that was easily explained because, you know, they're easier to carve than pumpkins and they were more prolific here in the U.S., I guess, than turnips where they just worked, they shed more light. But, you know, I guess what we didn't get into is why we have the various different designs for jack-o'-lanterns, like the different faces that they make on them. What was the purpose behind that? So you can make a lantern, which is designed to just light up the area where you are, so stingy Jack can find his way throughout eternity. But then, you know, did maybe he carved a face on the outside of the turnip so he had someone to talk to, kind of like Tom Hanks with the uh, volleyball in the, Wilson, right in oh. Castaway, you know. So maybe the Could turnip be. is Stingy Jack's Wilson. Did the article say that the Irish people used to make faces on their little turnips? Um, that's I don't. I didn't get into that particular detail. I would have to basically do some research on jack o' lanterns to. Uh, they 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 had a picture uh, from the some sort of Irish museum, Greg. Yeah, and they had a turnip. And it was definitely a really old turnip. I don't it's know how the they... Museum of Country Life, Ireland. Yeah, and it has eyes and a mouth. It kind of looked like that shrunken head thing on uh, the uh, uh, Violent Thims album. It's super creepy. That's when I decided. Oh, hollowed ground. It kind of looks, yeah. like like, looks a little like a mummy. But, you know, here's the other thing. Not only do they carve turnips, but they also carved mangle wurzels. And I don't know what that is. That's a Dr. Seuss plant. <laughs> that sounds like something from Dr. Seuss. It sounds like a German mango. I'm not really... I mean, but mango it, it, it's the that mango the wurzel. Question, that begs the question, what vegetables were rejected vegetables where they tried to do something? <laughs> Holy so, green peas. Well, yeah. Potatoes didn't come into this, so you think potatoes would be good yeah. for that purpose. But maybe if you had... A candle in it, the flame would make it just too soft and it would fall apart on you. You'd actually want to cooking the potato. It would heat the potato. And turnips are a lot much hardier uh, vegetable than a potato, so that's why the turnips lasted longer. I, I think it's because potatoes, much like cows in India, are sacred in Ireland. So you wouldn't <laughs> you so wouldn't no, subject. You don't eat the potatoes in Ireland. No, you eat them, them, but you wouldn't carve them and, and idolize them. Yeah, yeah, but you, you don't eat eating. cows in India, so that's you wouldn't why. desecrate them. Quite yes, insane. thank you for your fact checking. <laughs> well, you live in Florida; you have to be fact checked. Oh, I know. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me do some math. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm back. He's got a powder all over his face. Uh, yeah, right, Belinda, you were about to say something. No what? I don't know. Right now, I feel like Camilla Harris, and I just have to be like, I'm speaking. Um, <laughs> Camilla Harris, isn't that Prince uh, Charles's wife? No. Who's Camilla what? Harris? She's the vice president. Oh, uh, Kamala maybe. Harris. I thought you said some other name. I thought you Camilla. said Camilla. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Kamala. I didn't think yes. it was that much different that that would be a. Well, I was thinking Camilla is a different name, so I was thinking C A M as opposed to K A M. Uh, Belinda, like between a Belinda, camera and a camera. Belinda, welcome to our show. And Matt is Mr. Quibble. Yes. If if your pronoun is incorrect, if you use a word out of turn, he will stop the show to point out your error. So if your ice clinks in your glass, I will have to quibble on this point. I don't stop the show. This is the show. It's uh, you, you, you interrupt you interrupt someone's train of thought. But anyway, but train of thoughts are meant to be derailed, or trains of thought, depending upon whether there's more than one. More than trains one are one. not meant to be derailed. That's not a good thing, Matt. When trains get derailed, we don't want that to happen. Yeah, but <laughs> real trains or trains of thought. 
Neither one should be derailed. But our trains are constantly derailed. That is involved in train derailment. That is it. <laughs> but you know, she had said Camilla Harris, so it was a person that I didn't recognize. But when, when I, realized I can't believe you didn't recognize that. Like you would not, would not make it in the CIA because someone would change a very minor thing and you'd be like, fuck, didn't even see it. Yes. Well, it would totally throw off all of the intelligence lines that you're trying to create if you had a mispronunciation of the of the actual person you're supposed to be investigating. You'd be investigating yeah. the whole wrong person. So you're right. Matt, you should totally work for the voting rolls guys who strike people from the voting rolls. <laughs> Not Kamala. Camilla. Camilla. Yes, that's fake. You're a hanging Chad. <laughs> you're a hanging you're all hanging Chads. <laughs> and actually that would be a good costume for you to do, Greg. Oh, yeah, you can hanging Chad. That's right. You can put your name Chad on there. It's perfect for the uh, election. And I'll put a noose around my neck. Yes. No, I feel like that would be triggering to people that are like suicidal ideation. Also, I, I might mention that given that our age, I don't know what, what age group he's talking to, but that's some pretty old news. Yeah. That's don't old you news. remember it's only old ladies who listen to this this podcast? That's true. That's yeah, true. Very demographic. I think I think I think sixty five percent of our listeners will know what a hanging chat is. The party I'm going to will be people my age and older. So yes. oh, well, then you're good. they might get it. They, oh, yeah, yeah. they might. If they followed politics back in the uh, early two thousands. Yeah. Or the late nineties. Or one of the two. Or both. Yeah. Uh, Belinda, I, I we have a predominantly female audience. I, I don't understand it. Do you have any perspective on that? As the only female we've talked to? <laughs> in our lives? Um, no, 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 no. Is it all your wife, girlfriends, and moms? <laughs> they don't listen to our no. shows. No. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Brenda's wife does not listen. My wife does not listen to this sh show uh -huh. at all. No to this nonsense. All right. They're nicer people than we are. Huh. Uh, my wife listens to my shit all the time. The last thing she's wanted to do is spend an hour listening to more of it. Or an hour and a half, for that matter. Mm. In some cases, two and a half hours. No. <laughs> we split I want to ask our guest, Belinda, what was the best Halloween costume you ever did? I'm glad you referred to her by her name of. so that we would know which guest you were talking about. Yes, Quibble, Mr. Quibble Master. <laughs> I want to ask our guest, Belinda, instead of our guest, Monkey? I feel like that I've been gay long enough that like I've worn costumes outside of Halloween. And so um, I haven't really tried really hard on Halloween very often. I did have one time my partner and I went as Fred and Wilma Flintstone, which I enjoyed quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, I actually made the outfits and uh, she looked like Fred Flintstone. It was pretty great. And, uh, and I was wearing the white dress and then I made these I got styrofoam balls at Joanne's that were like this big to make a giant. Oh, the pearl necklace. necklace. <laughs> That's cool. Mm -hmm. Have any of you guys ever had a costume that did become a lifestyle choice? In other words, you wore it and then it became something that was part of your life? Yeah, this uh, Unabomber sweatshirt I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it for Halloween. Very dedicated to his lifestyle now. <laughs> You know what kind of, to be honest though, I actually for Halloween in high school, I shaved off half my head and half my eyebrow and half my beard. So I was half man. And so I did it for like a week. And then later on in college. Wouldn't you just be half bald? Yeah, I was half bald. But oh. but later on in college, I did it for like nine months. And then I did it again, maybe like a few years later for like six months. <laughs> so it did become this lifestyle choice. And people in at the U of A called me half man. I'd meet people years later would be like, you're half man. I remember seeing you walk around. I was like, you know, just like the freak. Wow. I've never heard the story before. That's awesome. Yeah, Did I you also like photo. shave half your pubic hair as well? No, because nobody could see that. Because I wasn't you getting could. laid. You would be the one. I guess who... I could. It was, it was more to entertain people. I figured I'm not getting laid anyway. Because it definitely doesn't help you get laid. So I might as well do something entertaining with my hair. Maybe people will get a laugh out of it. You couldn't have found somebody who would do the opposite side of their body with the hair, too. And because then maybe that would be the one you would have sex with. That would have been a cute... We would have been a cute couple if I yes. found a woman to do the other been, half. You would have completed each other since you both <laughs> yes. have. You like literally like complete each other. The origin of love. <laughs> it would have been so it sweet. It would have been independent. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> It's like you could never break up. They don't exist without you, pretty literally. So. <laughs> That's 
say you'd be half the man you used to be. I was just going to say, please, nobody sing that song. Uh, I can tell you that my current hairstyle is a uh, product of my Halloween costume when I was nine. And I went as a punk rocker. And I had uh, this hair. I didn't realize this until recently when I found a picture of this. Um, and uh, I had this hair. And I cut my hair and my mom got really mad at me. Well, you should know that both Brendan and Greg are former punk rockers in bands. I'm also a former punk rocker. See, and I'm the yeah. odd man out on this one. But generally, I am the odd man out. <laughs> you are definitely odd. <laughs> and a man. <laughs> and out. You're not and, out yet. Actually, I'm inside. Is what I'm You're waiting outside. to come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and a big fan of prog rock, which, you know, we've discussed endlessly on several shows about how it's so much better than punk music. How it's a yes. piece of absolute garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I did that half head in high school, for, um, I every morning my mom would be in bed and I'd always kiss her goodbye. Like, hey mom, I'm going up to school. And I remember reaching down, kiss her, kiss her on the cheek. And she opened her eyes and she just started screaming like a horror movie. <laughs> She's like, oh, oh my God. God. She's like, you're not going to school like that. And I was like, I lied. I said, Mom, I have a test today. I have to go to school. I'll fail this semester if I don't take this test. And she's like, oh, fine. And then I think she picked me up at school after that, and she was just dealt with it. So for another week, I still had it. And she was like, oh, you. She didn't like it, but she was like, okay, whatever. She said, oh, you. Oh, yeah, that's how my mom talks. I oh, you. you refer to your mother as mommy. Do you refer as mommy? I do. Mom? Okay. I try to get away from it, but she gave me shit about it. So I still call her mommy. She's 86. Yeah. But, but she is senile now. She, she has dementia. She's like a child. So it works. I, you I'll refer to her wants. to other people, you call her mom, not mommy. Yeah, my mother, I'll say. I won't say. Mommy said, like, I'm not Norman Bates. I'm not like, <laughs> mommy said I have to brush my <laughs> teeth tonight. Well, with Mike Pence and she's actually your wife. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mommy says I can't hang out with other women. Mommy says I can't be real president. I just have to be vice president. <laughs> but isn't that the part of the presidency where you get to do whatever you want? What? Mommy, you don't president? have much power. Yeah, it's because well, you're the vice president. You're the president over the vices. You're oh, the I one. wouldn't be surprised if Pence, Pence was, if Trump wasn't a whole puppet and Pence was secretly making all of his decisions. You think, you think that's happening? I, don't, I, I wouldn't almost say wish that was happening. I, I doubt that entirely. I think there may be somebody else pulling Pence's strings, though. Yeah. I, know. I mean, but, he's clearly like an actual puppet. <laughs> kind of. You know, his head moves in that regard to a large yeah. degree. But, yeah. Weren't you saying to me um, a couple of days ago that you had a big inflatable Trump doll that you were going to be spanking for Halloween, Belinda? No, not for Halloween. Hold on. Thank you. Uh, no, I had it for my show that was the uh, International Coming Out Day Comedy Extravaganza that I had on YouTube in conjunction with Northwest Pride and Jack Daniels Jamboard. And you can find it online if you are one of the three people watching this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Or listening, or listening to. We do have some. Uh, it's six hours of stand-up comedy and interviews, and oh. yeah, it was really fun. It was really well, fun. Let, let's, you know what? I want to go back and give you a full time to promote your show. So you're saying you had something you have on, on YouTube. Why don't you go ahead and take a couple of minutes and tell us? This was this past Sunday, right? Yeah, but I mean, I already did it. So it's so it's stand-up and comedy uh, from all over the world, and then we did like little bits in studio, and so I had a couple of live stand-ups. And then um, I, I had a guy that is his own improv troupe. He's called Solitaire. And he does all, he does uh, improv is his own. Like he takes a suggestion that he plays all of the characters within a play. It's real fun. Wow. And uh, and then we had um, uh, interviews with people from all over the world. So I had like all these uh, headliners that are uh, people, blah, blah, blah. Anywho, within that, we did, uh, I spanked Trump uh, live on camera uh, during the show. Okay. And, and did you use a paddle or was it like um, I, used, I used a paddle and then um, I also used a uh, flogger. 
a flogger, like it's, a cat of nine tails, or kind of. It's like a. It's like a. a the one, but then the the trailies are all traily. It's not braided or like cat of nine tails, where it's like individual thick ones. It's like a like that. <laughs> it's like an octopus on a stick. Yeah, a little bit. Like okay. just like a little bit of a like a. Oh, you don't you you can't even see on this, so you can't even see what I'm doing. Uh, it's like it's like tendrils versus like big thick. Um, I, I think, think I had one of those was... used on my ass when I went used to go to the sex club. Yeah. <laughs> this woman yeah. once uh, oh, she was God, a sadist. Yes. And she wanted go. to uh punish me and she used something like that, it sounds like. True. That that sounds it hurt. You wanted to be punished, Greg? I know I didn't. It was um it was just like a no, thing. She was like she seemed nice and I she was a sadist and I said, Yeah, sure, you can spike me out. Maybe I'd like it. I didn't know. I'm very vanilla. I thought this could be a new thing that I might be into, but it just hurt. <laughs> it wasn't fun. It was just like, out, oh, stop, please. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> can you poke me in the eye next? I want to see if that hurts. <laughs> yeah. Or if it's a turn on. Ooh, Maybe that's a turn on. Somebody sticks our finger far up a nose. <laughs> <laughs> Give it's me a like, COVID test with a Q-tip. Yeah, yeah. It's like two of them at There's once, somebody, please. No, no, no. Okay, now you know as well as I do that there is some weird dude that is into COVID tests. And then he's like... <laughs> and he's like <laughs> and he's into weird, nasal? Dude, you've been in three times this week. You don't have COVID. And he's like, no, I need to know. And, you know. <laughs> I need another one. That's your <laughs> costume, Greg. Crazy. That's the costume you're part. You just get two Q-tips shoved up your nostrils. <laughs> You're like, I'm a guy with a COVID fetish. <laughs> that could be, that, that's a good idea. I have Q-tips. <laughs> I own some Q-tips. I could do this. I'll pay $9. That. I'll just, like, do it. <laughs> just wear the PPE and just pretend we're doing it. It's almost like the character in uh, Little Shop of Horrors. He likes to go to the dentist. Time? Yeah. Because he's a masochist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I think he was a sadist. <laughs> no, I thought the guy who goes to the dentist is a masochist. The he dentist likes the was pain. the sadist. Yeah, the yeah, dentist was the sadist. Yeah. Well, I thought you said he, the dentist was a masochist. I was like, that's not. Oh the no. Way. Yeah, he's a sadist. I know for, for a fact that's not the way that works. <laughs> you know, you could go as Audrey too from uh, Little Shop of Horrors, Greg. If you have a plant hanging near you, or oh, that's true. You could be Seymour. You could like a I own no plants. Or something. You don't have a. That would be work. That would be work oh, buying yeah, a plant. You got black glasses, though. But if you got those black, uh, circly glasses, you could do Seymour. If yeah, you just yeah. buy like a little fat cactus, Seymour. Get a cactus or something. I'll be fat Seymour. Maybe like a little shop of Arizona horrors or something. Standing beside me. <laughs> I love that song. Don't need to worry. So, Belinda, did you ever go to Halloween dressed in your, like, dominatrix gear? We were like, oh, I'll kill two birds with one stone. I got this stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was, that's kind of been a default. Uh, yeah. Out, yeah, because. Did she it, say it, she was wearing dominatrix, dominatrix gear, Greg? I don't remember her talking about that. No, she what? didn't, but Stalking I know that she was, something? she was a dominatrix. She's on Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. You are. You do have your own Wikipedia page. That is correct. Which, which, by the way, Matt, no one's stalking her. You sent us all that link. <laughs> Did I? Yes. Then I'm stalking so you. I've yeah. stalked you, Belinda. Stalk her, Matt. Thank you for helping us stalk Belinda. <laughs> you said, um, you said, here's her Wikipedia page, and I said, oh my goodness, I'm in. I mean, now I'm sort of impressed, and you know. Wow. Brendan, I try to play stupid about things. You're not supposed to call me out on stuff that I'm playing stupid about. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's why I'm. That's why I'm here, Matt. Call you out on stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's like when I'm like pretending to be stupid. Come on. I don't want to appear smart to people. Matt's like, oh, people, I had no idea. Belinda was a dominatrix. It'll give people a bad <laughs> idea about me. For fend. All right. Well, here's 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 the deal, Matt. You, yes, Brendan. You, you, you let up a little bit on the uh, grammar Nazi, word choice Nazi thing, and I'll, I'll stop calling out your stupid. Why would I do that? Why would I want you to stop calling the, that out? Okay, well then, don't <laughs> complain about it. <laughs> well, that's part of the show, too. All right, fine. <laughs> this all goes complaining. wherever it goes. You know, we, we have the full license for this just in the title of the show. 
So it's uh, like you're right. we can get away with these things. Why do you think that I pretend to back up things that I don't actually believe in? Because it's part of the show. Oh wait, I, I gave something away, Greg. Oops. <laughs> what did you what did you back up that you don't actually believe so in? So Belinda is an American stand up comedian, writer, activist, actress, and singer, and is the yes. founder of the Portland Queer Comedy Festival. Organizer of the Portland Dyke March and is a co-organizer as well as date auction host and fundraiser MC of the Butch Voices Portland Regional Conference. So I was just decided to do the first paragraph from the Wikipedia page that I didn't know anything about. <laughs> just to make that uh -huh. happen. Belinda seems to have disappeared though. I don't know if she's still here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I just have a, a black screen. So I had to plug my no, I had to plug my phone in, and so I decided not to jumble the camera and. Oh, got it. Yeah, sometimes I don't know if people have like lost their connection or not. If There's one thing I'd like to say about Halloween. Do Do you guys remember we're supposed to be talking about Halloween? Oh, what? <laughs> is, uh, uh, wait, ha remember wait, Halloween? Wait, 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 Are you sure it's Halloween or is it the Irish or is it turnips? Which of those three, really, Greg? Halloween. I don't really want to talk about turnips, <laughs> and uh, not very interesting vegetable. But um, Halloween, like I feel so sad for the kids. Even in the '90s, it already happened when. Like, to me, Halloween wasn't like, oh, it's spooky, supernatural holiday. It was our day to basically be, like, uh, run wild. Like, I grew up in suburban New York in the 70s. Parents didn't give a shit. It was just like, guys, go out, get candy. We were just roaming around till 10 at night, which we never got to do, and just getting into all kinds of crazy antics. And then, you know, in the 90s, everyone got scared and was like, oh, you're going to get candy at the mall or you just go to these stores and we're going to be with you. The parents are going to stand with you while you get your candy. That did not happen when I was a kid. It was our night to run wild. It was like that movie uh, shit, what's that movie where you're allowed to kill someone for a night? The Purge? <laughs> the Purge? <laughs> it was like The Purge. We were just wild. It was like Lord of the Flies. It was like our night to just be fucking wild and just have no So you were out murdering people is what you're saying? It could have happened. We didn't ever <laughs> murder anyone, but that could have been part of it if we so wanted. Did you do anything because... lesser like kidnapping and you did some manslaughter perhaps? Like unintentional deaths? You know, lots of vandalism. Okay. Lots of... You know, it was just... Did you do any other, was, like, random do much torture vandalism. of people? If that never came up, Interrogations, maybe, to get some data. I but, when I, but when I saw these kids in the 90s, like, so neutered on Halloween, I felt so sorry for them. Like, guys, your mom walking around with you getting candy, that is not Halloween. Halloween was so exciting because it was the one night we could just run wild, and our parents didn't care. I, I mean, I right. lived in a safe suburban neighborhood, so there really I, wasn't much fear. I didn't live in a safe suburban neighborhood, and I remember when I was a kid, this would have been, well, not the 70s. I was a little older. It might have been the early 80s. Uh, there was a trick-or-treater who was murdered, like shot to death by the door he was knocking on. How could the door hold a gun? <laughs> the Quibble. door, I know. <laughs> the door murdered the boy. The door no. he was knocking on, who had a person behind it, Mr. Literal, Opened the door and then shot the kid. <laughs> Doors heard, don't kill people. People kill people. Kill people. <laughs> we, we heard the gunshot. I was with my friends. I was probably 11 or something, maybe 12. We heard the gunshot. We ran around, and it was the first time. It's like uh, the Stephen King thing. It was the first time I saw a dead body. This dude was laid out. He was probably Whoa. about six, 16, and the, the old man had just shot him because he was – freaked out and scared and I don't know. I don't know what the kid was saying. Maybe he was saying some awful shit, but he ended up dying that night and yeah. So yeah, Halloween was crazier when we were kids, but um, I live in a neighborhood. I will probably, well, I don't know with COVID now, but, but pre COVID I would have, I usually have three, nah, four to 500 kids come to my door every Halloween. So crazy. If, had, and you ever murdered I've, one I've of them? Like, <laughs> I've never murdered any of them. them? I've shot one good for you. you. Good on you, Brendan. <laughs> His door, however, is like <laughs> well, right on so the edge. <laughs> the door is right <laughs> on the damn edge. 
I just leave it open so it doesn't get knocked on. So what was this neighborhood where the kid got shot? What part of the world was this? Is this Washington or? No, this was Albuquerque, New Mexico. New Mexico. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, that was probably just a drug bust gone bad. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Drug dealer. What was that? All I know is we were trick-or-treating. We heard a gunshot. We came around the corner. Dude was dead. No cops were there yet. Kids were like, ah! and uh, then we left. Did anybody Whoa. get the candy of the kid who was down? <laughs> yeah. I was sort of traumatized by the whole thing. I don't recall his candy back. He might have lost his appetite a little. Maybe. I certainly didn't For steal candy. it. It seems mm-hmm. like that would have been a perfect opportunity because that's the thing in all those with the video games. I would have taken his shoes. After the guy dies, they go through his pockets. <laughs> yeah, take his shoes. <laughs> if they were my size. <laughs> it was still pretty <laughs> fresh, and the old man still had a gun, so most of us just scattered after we <laughs> realized what had happened. So the old wow. man was just standing there still with a weapon in his hand. Yeah. So, That's Brenda, crazy. did that change things in your town next year? Did Halloween kind of not be the same? Were they like, no, from now on? Did you ever hear what Roman happened to the guy with the gun? Kids no, around. no, the internet didn't exist, and I didn't read the daily paper. But uh, we didn't go back to that neighborhood. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. that wasn't our neighborhood. We would go. We lived in pretty much the ghetto. We would be we would walk to more richer neighborhoods to get the better candy because nobody in our neighborhood was giving out candy. So we decided that the next Halloween bullets. We weren't going back to that neighborhood. <laughs> it's probably a good chance. I just want to ask you guys, do you guys think <laughs> this that, uh, they're not going back to that neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. At least to see like if going the candy back to might still be there. <laughs> do you guys think that um, the apple the razor blade the thing candy ever man. happened? The apple, the razor blade and the apples? Is that a, the, the razor blade and the apple thing? Is I know I heard all legends? about that when I was growing, about, growing yeah. up. Yeah. But, I, I'm but sure did that somebody, really happen, do you think? Somebody probably did it to somebody somewhere, and that's probably where no, it I thought, I think that it was. A, I think it was a conspiracy by the uh, Big Candy to... Uh, <laughs> big candy. Encourage, or the dentist. It's all b- Willy Wonka's buy. fault. Now, listen, to encourage people to buy uh, manufactured candy versus making their own. Yeah. My dad was a dentist Theory. and he used to give out apples. And I'm sure all those apples were thrown away because every kid was like, I'm not going to bite this. Well, no kid wants fruit on Halloween anyway. That's true. But plus, I mean, plus fruit equals betrayal regardless. So that nobody should be eating fruit anyway. I like apples. I'd, I'd eat an apple, but it wouldn't be my, I wouldn't be thrilled by it. But back then I wouldn't. I'd be like, oh, this could have razor blades in it. Because every, every kid believed that. Urban legend. Sure, could have been yeah. injected with acid yeah, too. Really with your gear of a gerbil up his butt. <laughs> but if it was it, injected with was acid, was it a gerbil be... or was it an apple? No, it was a gerbil. The okay. Richard Gear thing was most definitely. Are we talking about gerbil piping now? I think Halloween? it's like when you're getting a gerbil on Halloween and you're like, "Should I eat it? Does it have a razor blade in it? Or should I pipe it up my ass? Or should I get a little house for it?" <laughs> it's like All very you're... good questions. To ask like, myself on Halloween, <laughs> what should I do with this gerbil I was given? Tune in next week when we decide what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> That's always a question. What are we going to be talking about? All right, well, I'm going to take a break right now because uh, this is usually where the commercial or the PSA pops in. So stop recording. And I want to thank Belinda Carroll very much for coming on to this particular episode of the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. Um, Belinda, is there anything that we can say as a parting gesture to point people towards where your comedy is or any of a website or anything like that? Uh, you can you can check me out on Instagram, Belinda Comedy, okay. or uh, you could check out my thing on uh, Pride Northwest's uh, YouTube page, YouTube slash Pride Northwest, and that's my international comedy extravaganza I just did, and it's like six hours of comedy. If it's fun, check that out, and that's it. And then if you want to send me money, it's uh, Belinda Comedy on Venmo. Belinda Comedy on Venmo. You got any PayPal hmm. or anything else? Just Venmo. Is there just a particular Venmo. amount of money you want? I mean, like specifics, five dollars, ten dollars. Obviously, a million would be great. Yeah, if you could send me between uh, one dollar and uh, fifteen dollars. $17.87 is what she's shooting for. 
on Venmo, everybody. On Venmo. Venmo. On specifically Venmo. That's like the one app that I don't have is the Venmo. I've got a couple of you other don't have Venmo. You just, Venmo and PayPal are owned by the same people, but Venmo you just have the one little handle as opposed to giving out your whole fa uh, your whole email address. So uh, it makes it good for makes it good for for fans to send you money, but not necessarily people that owe you money where you can send them your email address and be like, "This is my PayPal." <laughs> well, I use PayPal and I use Cash App. Those are the two that I use. I don't use Cash App either. Yeah. Well, anyway, that being the fa case, fascinating yeah. subject, Belinda. Hey, thank, you know <laughs> thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thanks, Belinda. Is there yeah. any last uh, parting shots you want to make about any of us here before you go? <laughs> any attacks you want to make? Anything about involving turnips you want to bring up before you leave? No, but I do want to see uh, Bearded Dude's uh, Halloween costume for the karaoke night. Eighty, Which one is the Bearded comic? Dude? We all have Me. beards. Oh. <laughs> but you know, I'm, yeah. Oh, you don't use videos. It's like you, you, you owe to your fans to show them the... One of these the days. Of that conversation. Maybe we'll put Greg in charge of the Instagram account with all the photos that we take of each other. I'll get on that. <laughs> Right. What's Instagram? <laughs> right. Okay, good night. All right, thanks a lot, Belinda. Good, good night, night, Belinda. Coming on. Thanks thank for you. coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Appreciate it. All right, now we can talk about her. I kicked her out. No, anyway, that was good. I'm glad we had finally had a guest on. It was. I think she yeah. did, she did well. I think we'll never have another one after that. <laughs> I think she uh, she was just like, oh my god, these guys. They've I'm getting three time. listeners. <laughs> well, you know, point? One thing I did notice, though, is that with the fourth person, or maybe it could have been like the technology she was using, because she would cut out a lot whenever she was talking. So we just hear her really muffled sometimes whenever. Yeah, she, like, I wanted to say something and say, let's put a pin in it and correct this. But I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. I, I think I because should've. I think the nature of the Zoom technologies, that's, that's how things are. Anyway, so back to. Pizza fund. So currently we are at six dollars and forty three cents that we've collected since the end of June. Ah. So we're on our way. To slowly. Very, very slow. Tortoise like on our is that way. Like a, is that like a dollar a month, roughly? Uh have we made yeah. that much? Have we made a dollar a month? Say so June, Not July, even. August, September, October. Nah, it's a little more than a dollar, like a buck and a quarter. Yeah. Buck and a quarter. Yeah, All right. a quarter a month. So you know, what's that come out to about uh, ten cents a day, something like that. Big money. You guys, we gotta get Patreon. There's more suckers on. We Patreon. have Patreon, but what are you gonna do, do with it, Greg? We have yeah, we have a Patreon account and we have a YouTube account, but we just haven't done anything with them. And nobody's donated to Patreon. Why would they donate if there's no content? Contact. Content. Content. Oh, content. Stuff. Stuff needs to be put on it for people to want to pay to see. We have given content, much content. No, 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 no. Greg, Greg, the whole thing with Patreon, uh, shh, the whole thing, shh, 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 Matt, the whole thing with Patreon <laughs> is that you give your content on your YouTube or your podcast or whatever. For Patreon people, people that are paying the extra, they get extra. So we can do bonus episodes, like they 10 do, minutes. Yeah, bonus episodes and additional stuff, and that's what you're paying we for. We can do that. that. Yeah, but we don't have any of that, Greg. We could do that. Well, we could do lots of things that we're not doing. Are you, you going to take control over the Patreon account then? I, I don't think, know how. I think, we should, I think we should do an OnlyFans thing. Yeah. Which is kind of like for the Instagrammers and the like shady YouTube chicks that, like, you know. <laughs> the old so ladies saying we're gonna be like webcam um uh, plots <laughs> on patreon like greg's, about gonna, it. greg's gonna show us nipples or something the audience the audience's older females i yeah. don't think that's what they want to see though do you know that though i don't Do know, know anything that. i know nothing my opinion is they can't even see us at all if they, they can't see us at all some we were <laughs> They saw how good looking we were. That could be a big thing. <laughs> right, but that would require actually doing something with the video footage. Yeah. 
And, you know, I have an idea for it. I don't have a plan for it. I haven't made a plan because that'll require a lot of additional work. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I would like to do, like, specialty videos where we could do all of the times that you disappear from the camera, you know, as, like, one particular video in and of itself. All the times sure. that... Uh, that won't be... That would be very boring, but if you want to... <laughs> be like, one extra... Well, I was thinking of using the Patreon also for all of the raw footage. In other words, the unedited versions of the show for those yeah. who want to torture themselves and listen to us do a lot of stuttering and hemming and hawing and saying er and ah uh, and all the other noises that I cut out for the normal podcast. What if I send out autographs to anyone who donates on Patreon? I'm sure there's three people in the world who want my autograph. I, I've never even seen your autograph. Is it something special <laughs> I'm <lying>. about it? <laughs> no, I'm lying. That's obviously not true. Well, no, you know, Paula might want your autograph. We don't know. <laughs> she might. Or your sister might alternate want Alternate reality. The, those are the two people we know who actually listen to the show, to the to the podcast, yeah. are your sister and Paula. So um, maybe they want your autograph. Your sister might have it already, though. Hats off to Greg's sister, by the way. Yes. She's right. a great woman. One who's willing to listen to it, not the other sister, who will not I, listen to it. because I call her St. Maria. Because I'm too mean to Greg. Oh, so she is what All Saints Day is all about. So Halloween is about your sister Maria. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. let's get into the, the, well, the, sexy uh, the demographic. Maria. So I don't think we've lost any more French listeners this week. I think they it's stabilized. So we've got 88% United States, 9% France. I think last week was 8% maybe, or was it 9 Something like that. I can't remember. And then we still have a large amount of one less than one percenters from Ireland, that might bump this week with the, you know, the, the podcast change, the title. Uh, Canada, India, Nigeria, Brazil. Did we have Brazil before? I don't, think we had Brazil. I don't think so. I don't remember that one. Germany, Ukraine. I don't think we had Germany before either. Germany might be a new one. Doesn't sound uh, familiar. Because I think we would have done like a German accent to drive them away. Uh, Ukraine, Philippines, Bangladesh, Singapore, and the United Kingdom. And um, still, we're listened to at 48% of other platforms than Apple, Anchor, or Spotify. And uh, our demographics are still about 69% the ages of 45 to 59, and 66% female. I just so want to say to our German listeners, Ich bin ein Berliner. Do you know what that actually means, Greg? I am means, a jelly donut. Yes, it means I am a donut. <laughs> so how do you say it correctly, then? Oh, I don't remember, but it's not Berliner. It's like, it'd be like from Berlin or something like that. Oh, okay. But yeah. <laughs> Lost I, in I, translation. Did, did you know that, or was this something that I told you? No, I heard that years ago. Oh, okay. John F. Kennedy was kind of this gaff. Well, that, that, famous... uh, that was Eddie Izzard. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was an Eddie Izzard skit. That's where I heard it. Oh, uh, no, Eddie, but it's really, Eddie it's Eddie true. It up. Well, I heard it in, in Germany, and it was a friend of mine who was German who told me the story. I didn't realize that it didn't mean that. And they went, yes, he basically, President Kennedy said, I'm a donut. <laughs> I went, oh, that's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and But they said that actually endeared him to the German nation, though, because they realized he was trying and to say, but then to say he's a donut it made it kind of funny. <laughs> Did they anyway. laugh at the speech? I, I've never seen a video of that. I don't know, I but I would imagine out. there would have been a few people, you know, if you could find a German with a sense of humor, who might have laughed at that. It's very possible. Yes. All it's right. Like finding well, a unicorn. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you might find a unicorn in Germany who might have a sense of humor. It's hard to say. All right. So, oh, before I forget, everybody, uh, don't forget, we have a new website. It's qsblaw.org, and you can email us at quibble at qsblaw.org. And uh, one easy thing, if you have your phone, is you can leave a message really easy by tapping on the microphone icon on your phone whenever you go to our website, and you can leave us a message. Whatever that message happens to be, you can leave it. Uh, does anybody have anything profound or pithy they would like to end this particular episode, the Irish Halloween turnip episode, this client of ours that is quite vegetable and thing? I'm going to be sexy Mike Pence for Halloween this year. <laughs> <laughs>